Sion, Sinai, Sagism, and keep it simplest medium. Moses misunderstood. Verily, Moses is the most misunderstood person who ever lived. Missing the point origin is not the same thing as the point origin is missing. I chose the former over today's high-speed wreck. Moses left it behind at Genesis 101a slash Aleph, and I recovered it from the dustbin Ganitza of the sagists. At least that much we know now from our recovery of the universal principle of knowledge of paradise cabology. This is a breviary privileging conclusions over arguments. Residue from the baby bang. This is an off-off midrash on the front and back narratives of Sion and Sinai in the tradition of the Tanakh Bible. Broadly speaking, it's on the role that sagism plays in the Zion of the prophets and on the Sinai of the Torah. Our thesis is that unless there is an indelible residue from the revelation of the Torah to Moses at Mount Sinai, the default thinking is taking the authority of sagism at its word. Of course, one may argue that the devil that we know is better than the, than the devil we don't know. Más vale malo conocido que bueno por conocer. But if, quote, I think, then I am, unquote, is accepted, then, quote, being is becoming. It would seem to follow that creative thinking is conditioned for real change. The definitions approach. Let's talk with the definitions to the character of our protagonists as these are attested in the Tanakh Bible. Zion, parched land. This term of Zion, parched land, first appears in Prophets at 2 Samuel 5, 7. Quote, But David captured the stronghold of Zion, parched land. It is now the city of David. Ir David, the city of David. This term of Zion appears by reference as Ir David, the city of David, in the same verse, 2 Samuel 5, 7. Quote, but David captured the stronghold of Zion. It is now the Ir David, the city of David. Sinai thorny. Let's now move on to Sinai. The, this term first appears in, as Midbar Sinai, thorny wilderness, in Exodus 19.1. Quote, on the third new moon, after the Israelites had gone forth from the land of Egypt, on that very day they entered the Sinai appears by reference as Hahor, the Israel camped there in the mountain of Elohim, Horeb, desolate. Hahor, no, Har, Ha Elohim, the mountain of gods. In the same verse, 3 1 appears Horeb, the mountain of gods. In what follows, Elohim is translated as gods, God of gods, with capital G and italicized S in singular. Quote, now Moses, tending the flock of his father in law Jethro, the priest of Midian, drove the flock into the wilderness and came to Har, Ha Elohim, the mountain of gods, to Horeb. Dual ending Jerusalem, Jerusalem. The ending Aim indicates dual, thus leading to the suggestion that the name Jerusalem, Jerusalem, refers to the fact that the city initially sat on two hills. Dual is a grammatical number that some languages use in addition to singular and plural. The basic rule is that feminine nouns change their last letters to Vav, Tav, O-T, while masculine nouns get at the end Yod, Mem, Im. Dual, by contrast, Yod, Mem, Y, M, with the respective I vowel underneath as Aim. The dual ending usually refers to a pair of something, such as a naim, two eyes, or as naim, two ears. In Kabbology, one S slash single dual, single D, dual R, plural P. Egypt Mitzrayim. It is worth noting that Egypt Mitzrayim has dual ending just like Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Genesis 3, 1. Quote, from Egypt, Abraham went up into Negev with his wife and all that he possessed together with Lot. Names carry meaning. Abraham went up into the Negev with his wife and all that he possessed 
together with Lot. Is this an indication of Israel backsliding to the old ways of idolatry of Egypt by dualism? Greece, Logos. Dual ending Ayim backsliding to Egypt, but also Logos' reason of oral Torah as front sliding to Greece. This would represent this we represent by the absence of the slash D to S and DRP. Revelation and Manifestation. Sinai occurs in the Torah as part of Revelation, whereas Zion occurs in the Prophets as part of Manifestation. The question now is how do these two relate to each other to make a whole out of complex parts? Which is the model or norm and which is the representation conforming to it? Zion is seen as a homeland for Jews. Sinai is seen as a religion of Judaism. A few questions pop up. Chosen for what? Privilege? Mordechai Kaplan talks about Judaism as a civilization. What about cultural Jews? Is there such a thing as a or the greatest point of view which would make sense of all this? Jacob and Israel. The complexity which we encountered in defining Sinai and in a greater or lesser degree Sion parallels that of defining who or what is Israel, Israel, respectively. In telling from the above, this parallels the difficulty of defining universal knowledge in the greater scheme of things. All we know about Israel is in the name change from Jacob to Israel in Genesis 32, 29 and 35, 10. Quote, said he, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with Elohim and humans and have prevailed. Quote, saying to him, you whose name is Jacob, you shall be Jacob, called Jacob no more, but Israel shall be your name. Thus, he was named Israel. From the above, we take that the name of Jacob, heel holder, was changed to Israel, prevailing in struggle with Elohim and men. This means the name changed from supplanter to one who struggled with Elohim and with men and prevails. Israel as higher octave of Jacob. Who slash what is Israel? From the above search, we've managed to find Zion entangled with Sinai, Jacob with Israel, and particular knowledge with universal knowledge. What we're proposing is the universal principle of knowledge of paradise cabology to make sense of it all. It is the comprehensive science derived from revelation slash manifestation. That said, using paradise cabology would give us revelation S slash manifestation DRP with inv inspiration D, enlightenment R, erudition P. Briefly, as one whole S slash triad parts DRP. Blind faith and keep trying. Which is preferable between blind faith of goings and endless struggle of Israel? Fix it since it's broken. No le busques tres pies al gato. There is nothing wrong with seeking personal salvation. But what about the world left behind? Chosen is for a task and not for privilege. It's about struggling to understand the Creator as creative creatures of creation and not just being told by authority what is the case. Knowing is creating from something. Creative is thinking slash changing thinks DRP. Semicolon what, D, Y, R, how, P. Fortunately, Paradise Cabology comes to the rescue as person is slash individual DRP, believe D, values R, actions P. Oh, by the way, it is not true that I'm the wrong guy at the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people. Torah and Messiah. The Torah of Revelation is whole, complete, with nothing missing. This means not requiring a Messiah later on to bring the missing piece to complete the puzzle. What is missing is what was missed by the sages. The missed point origin has been there since creation and more recently since the interface between Revelation and Manifestation of Moses. We've recovered it as science logos of the reception of the tradition Kabbalah as paradise Kabbology. The Gordian Knot of Sagism. To delve endlessly in hair splitting is the pastime of sages. The best case scenario is no better than the worst. 
Case in point is falling in the trap of defining Zion and Sinai as we've seen in the above lucubrations. lucubrations. Without the indelible residue from the revelation of the Torah, we're at the mercy of sagism. Simple, simpler, simplest. Keep it simple. The simple can't get any simpler than the simplest. The simple of the simplers is the simplest. Simpler is better than simple, and simplest is best of simplers. Focus Israel. The focus of interest is Israel. But the present Gaza conflict remits us to the judicial coup of the recent past, and it has to be resolved for Israel to have a future. How far back to the past required is to Revelation, and from there bounce back to the present and forward to the unknown future. To resolve the present situation moving forward requires going back, going as far back as the Revelation. Panacea. Diplomacy is the buzzword. Negotiation cures all ills. But we're told from cradle to grave that the world is broken because it's a broken world. And we know from experience that trying to fix things, acting solely on goodwill, will end making things worse. We're, only, we're also assured of the good news of the, becoming, of the coming of the fixer and savior. Any handy man will tell you that things don't fix themselves, even if left long enough. First, know when something is broken and that you need to know what you're doing before attempting to fix what's broken. The trivial shouldn't even need mentioning. Curing stupidity. Once it's settled that paradise cabology isn't panacea, that it only cures stupidity, the rest of the broken world still remains to be fixed by us. The idea is saving creation as creative creatures of the Creator. Weekdays and weekend. The double standards of Baal idolatry means leading a worldly life on weekdays and a heavenly life on weekend, Shabbats or Sundays or Fridays. In the Torah, El Gods says, rest on Shabbat from work, but as an integral part, the weekend and the weekdays, not as two mutually exclusive domains. Shabbat means rest in Genesis 28 to 11. Remember the Shabbat day and keep it holy. Quote, six days you shall work, you shall labor and do all your work. Quote, but the seventh day is a Shabbat of your God, yod heh You shall not do any work, you, your son or daughter, your male or female slave, or your cattle, or the stranger who is within your settlements. Quote, for in six days yod heh made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them, and then rested on the seventh day. Therefore, yod heh blessed the Shabbat day and hallowed it. Being holy as set apart. Now we're finally on the right track once having followed the trail of the definition of Israel as one struggling with Elohim and with men and prevailing. We went from Shabbat unto holiness. But what is to be holy? Leviticus 19.2 Quote, Speak to the whole Israelite community and say to them, You shall be holy for I, your God, yod heh am holy. Holy means set apart, as in Shabbat is holy slash set apart, workdays DRP. The question now is what the triad stands for. The answer is as one whole is slash triad parts DRP. The slash comes to represent revelation slash manifestation as the point is slash origin DRP. Double negatives. In a binary world of zero and one, like in artificial intelligence of pluses and minuses, a double negative gives a positive. And in general, an odd number of negatives gives a negative, and an even number gives a positive. Needless to say, any number of positives gives a positive. But what about in a spectrum world, or to narrow it down to a triad world? Much like a coin with heads, tails, and rim. Normally, the rim doesn't count if it's thin enough compared to the faces, but if it's wider, it counts as the third option. 
In this case, the positive criterion still holds, but not so the negative. Suddenly, the negative criterion could equally well give negative or positive. This makes the double negatives meaningless without further clarification. Fighting anti-Semitism. The case in point is the slogan of fighting anti-Semitism. We all know what fighting anti-Semitism means because we know what anti-Semitism is. But does anybody know what anti-Semitism is because they know what Semitism is? We've gotten away with the use of double negatives for so long that suddenly we're at a loss when faced with identifying the core positive. That is, when faced with defining what do we mean by what we're talking about. In plain English, it's a cheap amusement park, the shell game, of guessing where to find the positive amongst the negative and double negative. Shema Yisrael, listen Israel, means pay attention and don't get distracted falling for hand tricks or for the revolution of the fairy wheel. The Residue of Revelation Paradise it stands to reason that if there is Elohim gods as God of gods in the heavens, then there must be a correspondent paradise principle of principles on earth, that is, with gods spelled with capital G with italicized S. The question is how to come up with a convincing narrative which puts it all together. It can only be as a residue of revelation at Mount Sinai to Moses at Genesis 101a slash Aleph of the Torah teaching. But note that revelation at Sinai entails keeping separate manifestation at Mount Sinai. That the flip side to Moses of the Torah leads to King David of the prophets and the writings. The universal principle of knowledge is slash DRP. The deal is sealed if we manage to couple Zion to Sinai in a convincing manner. Revelation at Sinai is slash manifestation at Zion DRP inspiration D, enlightenment R, erudition P. Rabbinism is just a school of interpretation of the Torah, post, second temple, and diaspora. Israel is not rabbinism. That much is clear so far. Dualism and holism. Once understanding holism as paradise, the pending question is how to properly define dualism. As things stand at present, it's certainly the product of a misunderstanding. If holism is S slash triadism is DRP, then dualism is misconstrued something like SD slash RP, I mean S hyphen D slash RP or S hyphen D R slash P with variants S function of D or D function of S or S hyphen D. You might be thinking, who cares? What does it matter? The consequences make a difference. There are many types of dualisms, but basically two for convenience as S function of D, R slash P or else D function of S, R slash P. The trick is where to place a slash separating the one whole S from slash triad part DRP. That is, if this were the case, we would then have R slash S function of D P or else R slash D function of S P. Each of these cases corresponds to very different scenarios of confused dualism. We leave it here for the moment to address it more fully on another occasion. Sagism. There is a saying in management that if you want to hide something, bury it under a pile of data. This is otherwise known as too many trees, very little forests. More to the point, the question of Semitism is not that, is not that different from what we went through at the top of the brief, brief when trying to define Zion, not to mention Sinai, because we hardly got to it. Defining Zion leads us to parched land, city of David, hill, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Ugusalim, Yebusites, Beth, Be, till we stop trying altogether. Regarding Sinai, all we managed to say was thorny, horrid, desolate mountain, mountain of God, before we went off on the tangent and underneath. Sagism is 99% right, only 1% off, missing the point origin. The sagist self-anointed himself up to sages from with the oral Torah, all under the incense smoke screen. As rabbinism, they added as backup the coming of the Messiah, 
just to keep the proof every day is from happening. Scion and sagism is scionism. In plain words, S function of D, R slash P means that revelation is a function of inspiration, that enlightenment serves as bridge, and that erudition is manifestation. This seems to be saying that Zion, the city of David, Jerusalem, the land of Israel, has prom uh, primacy over everything else. This invariably leads to endless wars and elusive peace. Chosenness as supremacy? The thing is that revelation is holy as in set apart from manifestation and in no way entangled to or with it. Holy is a slash of set apart of S from slash DRP. Sinai and sagism is Sinaiism. In plain words, D a function of S R slash P means that inspiration is a function of revelation that enlightenment serves as bridge and that erudition is manifestation. This seems to be saying that the oral, that the oral Torah tradition of rabbinism has primacy over everything else. This invariably means that chosenness is leading a careless existence on account of messianism. Chosenness as privilege? Each is self-righteous, sealot or messianic and sees no need beyond other than turning the clock back or pushing it fast forward, respectively. Mono slash dualism and uni slash triadism. It's high time to wrap things up. Zion plus sagism gives Zionism. But what is it if not dualism? Likewise, Sinai plus sagism gives Sinaiism. But what is it if not monism? Thus, we arrive at monism plus dualism or mono slash dualism, using the slash between them. This is the mainstream point of view. I'm not sure if my view is Sephardic and Usim, but paradise Kabbalah is not the norm. Sinai is a Torah of revelation, while Zion is the prophets of inspiration, enlightenment, and erudition. For comparison is one whole is and becomes triad parts. This comes across as one slash triad or for convenience as uni slash triadism. Gatekeepers. Even if the Messiah was to come, what would it bring if not the point origin, given that there is nothing missing in the Torah? It was only missed by the gatekeepers out of oversight. Once having the know-how, we would still have to do the heavy lifting to get a job done of our hiring. Which other way is there is there to do it if not as noted? The answer cannot be by default because there is no other way. Status quo is having everything remain the same except the point in question. But nothing changes without creative thinking. Israelism. Now that we know that we're talking about now that we know that we're talking about Israelism, when we're mentioning Semitism, we can proceed fruitfully. More to the point, creator S slash creation DRP. Civilization D, Constitution R, Culture P. On the timeline, it would be Moses S slash Pythagoras DRP, uh, uh, semicolon, Socrates D, Plato R, Aristotle P. But this is as good a place as any for linking with the rest till the next occasion. The ripple of life. Is messianism fail safe or is Sid sure fail? Why not the double safe with messianism and paradise cabology? Messiah has failed safe. Don't we all wish it were true? The problem is that it not only has no foundation other than faith, but it also negates the Torah altogether. We need a plan B as backup just in case. It is better to be safe than to be sorry. Reading and viewing. Recommended reading are my books at Amazon, quote, The Sweet Spot, a subtitle, All Revealing Yet Hiding in Plain View, and quote, Saving Creation, the baby bang of paradise civilization, amongst others, as well as viewing my videos. Quote, paradise cabology isn't panacea. It only cures stupidity. Quote, the sweet spot made easy. And quote, 351-53I Israel, Sion and Sinai, five power state, three votes per person, tutored infant suffrage, amongst others. My YouTube channel, at Rick Turiols Bonilla. 
Yours truly, Ricardo Turiols Bonilla. Thank you very much, kindly.